So, you know, let's also look at what is the performance impact of simultaneous multi-threading. Okay, so if you just write a thread by itself, it's going to have you know pretty high performance because it has access to the entire issue queue, the entire reorder buffer, all the four functional units, and so on. Right. So that's the best way to optimize performance for one thread. When I do simultaneous multi-threading, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to increase my overall throughput. I'm trying to maximize the number of instructions that get executed every single cycle. Okay, and I'm trying to minimize the underutilization of the processor. Okay, so if you know one thread let's say had an IPC of let's say 1.0 okay so if it ran by itself it has an IPC of 1.0 when I run two threads together you know each may have an IPC of you know let's say 0 0.5, 0 0.75 okay so why does each thread get slowed down it is because all the resources are being shared right now one thread no longer has access to all the registers and the entire reorder buffer and all four functional units right there are some cycles where one of the threads is going to get slowed down because some of the resources are being used by the other thread so when you do simultaneous multi-threading each thread by itself is going to slow down but on average my total IPC is now 1.5 Right, so before in any given cycle, only one out of the four units were being kept busy. Now, in any given cycle, out of the four units, 1.5 of them are being kept busy. So overall throughput and, and utilization has gone up, and my underutilization has gone down. So this is why I'm doing simultaneous multi-threading to maximize my overall throughput. But you have to realize that this is happening at the expense of the performance of each individual thread. Okay, and you could minimize this effect by saying that, you know, of these two threads, one will have really high priority. Okay, so as far as possible, it'll get really close to its standalone IPC of one. Okay, so that's what you can do by, uh, by prioritizing one thread over the other. And this just means that the second thread just gets any leftover issue slots. Okay, so, you know, it's, in that case, the IPCs might be, you know, 0 0.97 and, you know, 0 0.5, um, 0.52, let's say which gives you a total throughput of 1.49 IPC. Okay, and I'm just making up numbers at this point, but uh, this gives you an idea of how at least one thread can come pretty close to its standalone IPC, and simultaneous multi-threading will still improve throughput because there are many cycles where the high-priority thread is not using up all the resources, and it can you know use the other idle slots to get at least some work done, and that helps improve overall throughput. Okay, so you know one thing that people have studied very carefully with SMT processes is how would you how would you influence fetch how would instructions get injected into the execution engine to try and maximize overall throughput right so you have to recognize when some thread is being stalled at that times you will prioritize some other thread for example okay so uh, you know let me just talk about one empirical study that was done to try and understand this behavior so this is a case study of a real processor this is a Pentium 4 which is which was built in the early 2000s but you know its form of multi-threading is very similar to the kind of SMT that you might see in modern day Intel processors. Okay, so the Pentium 4 and even modern processors usually allow two threads to execute at the same time. Uh, there are some resources that are statically divided when you have two threads running. So when two threads run, they get an equal share of the reorder buffer, LSQ, and the issue queue. And this ensures that you know one thread which which tends to hog resources is not going to cripple the throughput for the second thread. Then there are some other resources which are dynamically shared, such as the trace cache, which is uh, a cache to fetch sequences of instructions. Uh, the decode units are dynamically shared, the functional units, data cache, uh, branch predictor, and so on. Okay, so let's look at how the spec benchmarks behaved on this processor. Okay, so this table is a little hard to read. Let me explain what is going on. So let's say there are 26 programs over here. The first program is gzip. Okay, so I've taken gzip and I've run it with every one of these other programs. Okay, so gzip has run with gzip itself. It's run with the next program, VPR, with GCC, and so on. Right, so essentially, if, if you run it with 26 other programs, you would get 26 different throughput numbers. Okay, and what is being recorded in this table is the best throughput I observed for gzip and somebody else, the worst throughput I observed for gzip and somebody else, and what is the average speed up when I run gzip with somebody else? What is the average uh, throughput I can expect? Right. So you'll see that uh, you know the the, um, the IPC ranges from 
or the normalized IPC ranges from 1.14 to 1.48, right? So if I ran GZIP by itself, the IPC would be 1.0. When I run GZIP with somebody else, the total IPC can be as high as 1.48. And you could interpret that as, you know, maybe GZIP running at 0.74 and the other program running at 0.74. Okay, so this is similar to the numbers I just had in my earlier example. So if you look at the final average throughput, it says 1.2. Okay, so if your programs are well represented by the spec workloads, then it means that when you run two threads together, your overall throughput instead of being 1.0 becomes 1.2. Okay, so you can say that now on average, when I run two threads together, you know, each thread's IPC goes from 1.0 to 0.6. Okay, but since I'm running two of these, the net effect is that my throughput improves to 1.2. So SMT does help, but it can severely impact the performance of each individual thread.